So what we did just the day is we chanted mantras of benediction, but also I chanted a sent up state and you know relocation and all of these things that this is currently being done at this point in time because mantras are formulas, it creates a vibration to send a message out to the universe. You don't know how long ago if you have to send a message, what you have to do. You may have to write a little note and somebody will have to carry it, you know, and you have to wait for them to reach and all of these things. So the saints and sages will understand the power behind the DNA of what is called as they have email now. Right? You have virtual mail, all kinds of things now, right? Where? In an instant that can travel and how so? What do you think is making that possible? Science, true what? Energy, vibration. Same way, the same way, the saints and sages, we consider them as scientists. They understood this from way back when? That you want to transfer, you want to carry a particular message to the divine, to the universe as the case may be, that it needs to be done in the format of a mantra. Now, it doesn't mean some people ask them, well, Baba, if I say it in English, it wouldn't work. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't work. But let's take it like this, for example. If you take a car to get to your destination, and you take a train, why would you just not take a car to go everywhere? Because for everything, there is some different medium that needs to be used. You want to reach faster, you use the method that will take you there. Faster. The Sanskrit syllables are designed in such a way that each syllable carries a particular vibration. When chanted, it carries the right message and it carries it faster, basically, right? So that's just a little bit of knowledge for you guys. So as we begin here today, you can see before you here, this is no longer the individual you would have known as your dad. Now that's hard to accept and hard to say, right? What I mean by that is that this will be referred to until today as Shava. Shava means a body, an empty vessel, right? The person that resided within this physical body was your, who you consider as your dad. Now, I always like to educate and explain this to people wherever I go because it's important for us to learn and understand. It makes you feel a little bit more comfortable too. Knowing that here is what, the person that I, I love in this physical body, they have not actually come to an end. You see, when we think about death, we think of death as being the, the end. But it's not actually the end. Death is a beginning to a new Journey, it is simply a transition. In Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Shri Krishna in chapter 2, he speaks about this and he says that the body that we have, after a while it becomes like worn out clothing. Now what do you do with worn out clothing? When it gets worn take it and give it to others. We shouldn't do that, right? We give it to others what we like for ourselves. Worn out clothing, you take it and you discard of it, right? Similarly, you know, Papa here, he would have said, I am a little bit tired of this mess. Here we are. Some of us in it for five times. Right? Right? So every day we are changing clothing. So we should not be vexed. We should not be angry. We should not say, why? Why did you change your clothing? He has changed the clothing of life. And he's now moving on to a new journey. Maybe a more beautiful one. Maybe a more peaceful one. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to pretend. Like I know exactly where he's going. You understand? But maybe. And we can only hope and we can pray and say the God. We are asking you at this point in time that we are sending our love, this vibration, and we are asking for the journey to become very easy. We are asking for the journey to become very peaceful. And now people will say, well, it does not really work. There are many tested and proven cases now, so it's not theory anymore like people will think, or they're just saying something that they read from a scripture. Don't look like that. There are many tested cases now to show, you know, people who have had experiences um, out of body, afterlife, all of these different things. I myself can attest to certain things, right? So I don't speak of anything I don't know. So with that being said, I want you to understand this very, very carefully. For the sake of you becoming more comfortable, being a little bit, I, I can't say happy, it's a little bit difficult at this point in time to be in that state, but for your mind to be a little bit more calm and eased, relaxed, to understand that, you know, hey, it is not the, it's not the what? It is not the end, right? So the clothing has been given up and now he will transition because you see, the soul which we are is called the Jiva. Right? It's the Jiva Atma. Atma, everybody knows Atma, right? So Jiva, we say that life was that divine spark. That is actually covered and cloaked not by one body, but by many bodies. So it also has a, it has not just one, but a few subtle bodies as well. So you may not be able to see the soul, but it doesn't mean that the soul does not exist. There are different dimensions and different realms. You will not get into the science of that. But just for you to understand. So when the soul drops this physical body, it doesn't drop every single body. Bhagavad Krishna explains again in Bhagavad Gita, he was telling to Arjuna. You know, Arjuna was standing on the battlefield of Kurukshetra and he was about to fight a battle to fulfill his duty because his duty is Meena Chandraya. So he stands and he fights 
against the negative forces to protect, to serve Dharma. That is the duty of a Kshatriya, right? In that case. So he stood there and when he saw on the other side of the battlefield that the people he was fighting against was his family. Now I have to be careful how I use this example because normally I just use police in the example, but today I can't use that example, right? <laughs> so normally, but I may still use it, right? Which is a good one, right? So the thing is, normally, if it is a stranger, when something happens, something bad happens, that stranger does something, what happens? Lock them up. And eh? that was the answer. Right? So we <laughs> lock them up, right? And then if it is somebody real close to us now, like we're probably giving trouble now, what do we do? No. I'll give him a reply. <laughs> he said, oh, he might get more legs, right? He said, no, right? They'll knock you up too. So, why am I saying this? I, I mean, I don't know the family personally, right? I have just been acquainted a little bit. So, don't think that I'm afraid of anything in anybody's garden. They know that, right? So, he said he'll get locked up too, right? But normally, sometimes you get a little bit of a lead away. And let me tell you why. Even Arjuna, who went on to become so great and so known throughout the world, at that point in time, you know, when he saw his cousin and he saw his guru and everybody on the other side of the battlefield, emotion started to come in. And Arjuna fell to his knees and he dropped the ball around and he was like, Oh God, I, I can't fight them, I can't kill them, there's my family and there's my guru and da 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 and all of these different things going on the road. Right? And Bhagavan said, he said at that point in time, Arjuna, you speak like a wise man, yet you act like a you act like a fool. If it is, you know that, hey, you are aware of these things that they are not the body and whatever, you can't really kill anybody, you can't bring anybody's life to an end. That's something we need to understand, it's real deep and real difficult to understand. But you are not in control of that. There are certain laws that the universe have that leads to someone coming, um, coming out of this physical body and that kind of thing, right? So, the emotion there got the better of him and he dropped his knees and he said, I'm not going to fight, I'm not going to start up the Dharma, it doesn't matter if they're bad, it doesn't matter what they have done, I don't want to know all of these things and he started crying. So Bhagavan then told her, he said, stand up and fight. That is your duty, now I'm not telling you all to go and fight no one thing, I don't go and say, poor people. No, 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 I'm not saying that, don't take it out of context, right? Arjuna's duty was to fight. If somebody is being hurt and your duty as officer, what do you do? You stand up and watch? No. You have to stand up and protect that. So that's your duty. If you don't do that, then you are not abiding by the laws of the Lord. Not just the laws of the land, but the laws of the Lord. You know why? Because you've taken up that portfolio. Just like today, if I come and lie to you, well, crap will smoke my pipe. <laughs> Is it true? Because I also have karma that I'm taking. That's what I'm telling you, even though it may be a little harsh in between, right? So, Arjuna, there, his emotions got the better of him. And he did not want to stand up and do his duty now. And like devotees, many of us get like that sometimes and we allow ourselves to become very, very unstable. Your emotions, we don't realize how powerful our emotions are. And it affects all areas of our life, especially when it comes to standing up and fulfilling our duty. But what the one is telling Arjuna, he said, let me tell you something. You think you can really take the life of someone? He says, these kings, Princes, rulers, everybody here, nor you nor I, there was never a time when we did not exist. Nor will there ever be a time when we cease to exist. That's the point I was coming to. Here now, what does that mean? God is created in all scriptures and all religions, they talk about it and it's just for us to understand it, right? God is there in the form of vibration, in the form of energy, permeating and pervading this entire universe, right? We are part of God. Ishwar Am Sajiva Avi Nashan. The scripture says that we are part of God. So the example I always use, you all have bottle water there, right? So you see bottle water. Just like that bottle water, before that water came to the bottle, they had to get it from somewhere also. So more than likely, you get it from the ocean, right? So they get the water from the ocean, they take it and they put it through whatever process. So tell me the particular process. Right? And then they put it in the bottle and they brand it, they give it a label, and then they sell it to you. You drink it all you like the waters. I like a different kind, maybe crystal clear. Right? You like aqua, there's not aqua pure, you can use aqua pure now. The water in the bottle, right? If I give you Richard, and I tell you, take this bottle of water, and go and pour it into the ocean to me, I'm like a good boy, you go and pour it in the water, right? And then I say, go back and find the same bottle of water for me. You say, this baba is a mad man, no? How, how does I find in this back? Because why? The water in the bottle and the water in the ocean will become one. God is like the, get the picture on a painting, God is like the ocean, 
Very simple example. We are like the water. Before the water was taken from the ocean, it didn't have a blue water bottle. But when it's taken and put into the bottle, then we brand it. What oh, this is called? Does it give a name? When a child is born upon the face of the earth and a child comes here, does that child have a name? No. You either go by the Baba or you go and you watch some movie star and you take the name, right? And you're like, okay, I like this one, so I'm taking this one, right? So you name the child. You attach the child to a home, you attach the child to a family, you attach the child to a school. You create all of these attachments to everyone. All the branding and the labels and all of these things. But before, just like your dad would have come, he did not have any of these labels. And that is what Prabhupada Krishna said. You know why? Because he's part of God. Just like you are also part of God. And our mission, our purpose and life devotees is to get to that point where we become aware of this, where we realize that we are nothing more than or nothing less than divinity. That's what we are. We are divinity having a human experience. So this point in time, we perform purification. Every ritual that we do in Hinduism, we always begin with by performing purification. So you all touch hands. Some lizards, now no, beating up the body. Om Madhya Mukha Gotrasya Mukha Pretasya Preta Tunivar Nartam Nritasthani Shavanandam Snanam Miyadiyate Tava Upatishtitam Preta Nandada Ayakam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Adhyam Kukotra Samukha Pretasya Preta Tanivar Nartam Nritasane Shabad Nimitam Chandanam Mayaliyate Dhavopatishnitam Preta Nantarayakam Hello Shivanava Mayalilala Ki Jai Sharanam So this year now, we have the Kush Kush and we're going to spray this here. It's really not Kush Kush, Kush is something else, huh? it's Kush Kush, right? So you, you can see it on the bottle here. We spray it here around the body. Now there are a lot of theories when it comes to the um, perfume and I've been hearing this from Fong Kuna. Though when you perfume and you're going to turn on the level here, you see, you know what I'm talking about, right? Right, it's one bag of nonsense. You see people say things that they don't know, right? This here, the sweet fragrance, when you smell something sweet, what happens? You feel very, how do you feel? Very calm and very relaxed and very peaceful and you want to be present in that atmosphere because it's very balanced. The sweet fragrance brings a balance to the energies in the atmosphere. If it is that they are negative smell, what is going to happen? You don't want to be present. So negative forces make themselves present there where there is a negative smell. Positive forces where you want the divine to be, you want God to be, etc. You want to make sure it's not it. Sweet. So I have to make sure I lock down the world before you leave anything else, you know? <laughs> right? So, you're going to take the time and you spray right around the box. Spray it on the cup. When you cut my hand on, there's one. You're going to find it. I'll help you come, right? No, no, no. No, no, no. Come right here. Om Madhyam Kukutra Samukha Pretasya Preta Tunivar Nartam Nandasane Shavanamadam Gandham Mayaliya Teta Vopadishtitam Preta Nandarayakam Chitta Chora Yeshura Kiba Navanita Chora Gopa Chitta Chora Yeshura Kiba Navanita Chora Gopa 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 Govardhan Dhan Gopa Jai Jai Giri Dhan Gopa La 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 Chit Chora Yeshura Ki Ba Navanit Chor Gopa Govind Hare Gopal Hare He Gopi Gop Bala Govind Hare Gopal Hare He Murli Dhan Gopa Jai Jai Giri Dhar Gopa La Jai Jai Giri Dhar Gopa La Jai Jai Giri Dhar Gopa La Chit Chora Yeshura Ki 
नवनीत चोर गोपाल बोलो श्रृंदाव प्यारी लाल की जय शरणम टाइम वी ऑफर गिफ्ट ऑफ दे मालस So as we often get up this the malas here today, anybody know why we use um flowers? Why do we give flowers to anyone? What do you think a flower represents? Is that you or you? What do you think the the flower represents? When you give somebody a flower, why do you give them a flower? It expresses your very good. You know this, right? It expresses your love. Similarly, when you do puja or any ritual that you are doing. When you use a flower, you are expressing. It's an expression of your love. You know, okay, I love you. But today, if you look very carefully, when you look at the malas that are here, you will see that they are not joined today. But today they are broken. Two very significant and important reasons. One is the mala obviously cannot properly fit right around the neck of the body, so you have to break it for it to be fit nicely and all of that. And secondly, today you are saying. That you know, Papa, I love you, and all of these things, and I'm giving this here as an expression of my love to you. But today is the time that this journey here has come to an end with us, and now you have to move on on a new journey, right? Now you have to move on. So now this journey has come to an end, and you have to move on to a new journey. So I am. Let's send you off with love. So I'm breaking my ties in, I'm creating a little bit of separation, and I say I'm sending you off with love at this point in time. So you take your time. Om Madhya Mukkutrasya Mukpreetrasya Preetra Punivar Nartam Mrdistani Shavad Nimitam Pushpamala Mayaliyati Tavopatishita Preetra Nantara Ayakam ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवते 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 वासुदेवाय 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 चलता Anyone see if he's driving around? Can't see the car properly. So now this one time, we're gonna wave the secret light. So, we all chant together. Jai Krishna Hare, Shri Krishna Hare, Dukhiyo ke dukh dhur kare. Jai 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 Krishna Hare. Let's do this, you can follow. Jai Krishna Hare, Shri Krishna Hare, Dukhiyo ke dukh dhur kare. जय 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 कृष्ण हरि जब चारों तरफ अंधियारा हो आशा का दूर किनारा हो जब चारों तरफ अंधियारा हो आशा का दूर किनारा हो और कोई न के वन हारा हो फिर तू ही मेरा पार करो जय 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 कृष्ण हरि जय कृष्ण हरि श्री कृष्ण हरि दुखियों के दुख दूर करे जय 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 कृष्ण हरे 
तो चाहे तू सब कुछ कर दे विश्व को भी अमृत कर दे तो चाहे तू सब कुछ कर दे विश्व को भी अमृत कर दे पूरन कर दे सबकी आशा पूरन कर दे सबकी आशा जो भी तेरा ध्यान धरे जो भी तेरा ध्यान धरे जय 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 कृष्ण हरे जय कृष्ण हरे श्री कृष्ण हरे दुखियों के दुख दूर करे जय 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 कृष्ण हरे रोश वृंदावन प्यारे लाल की जय शरणम So at this point in time, we make preparation for the present to the um, eulogy. Every day 
and she wishes that the Lord would give her peace and happiness wherever you are. Dance with the angels wherever you are. I love you, Dad. I love you, Dad. Grandpa would be dearly missed. I can still remember him playing games with us, especially our beloved game, Kukran. It was a silly made-up game, but a joyful memory that would live on, 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 live on with my cousins and I. Also, on our visits here, just pinch our cheeks and make us feel at home. Grandpa, you were taken from us too soon. I know I will not be the only one, but your entire family will miss you. We love you. I would like to recite a poem for my grandfather. Dear Grandfather, as we lay you to rest today, our tears fall and hearts shatter and ache, as we remember all the happy days. As we say goodbye, we recall all the joy, laughter, and smiles you shared with us, all the memories throughout your years with us. As we wipe the tears from our eyes, we give thanks for all you have provided for us and for the man we know you to be. We will miss you dearly. Till we meet again, rest in peace. We will always love you. I must say, uh, first of all, that that was really, really uh, brave of you all to be able to stand here and to do that. Now we have uh, some more news, okay? okay? Please indulge. Um, this was sent first by the daughter-in-law of Uncle Ramesh. She's a bit emotional and can't um, take to the mic, so please put it. I hope that we have no uh, issues, so please. Because what we see here, in terms of their home and the way it is, I remember it totally different. I remember it from the 80s when there was a wooden house and a shed in front. And one thing that struck me, though, you, you know people like to say you're poor and whatnot. I, though, it seemed as that. To, the outside eyes. This family was full of love. And for those looking in, they would never know how happy they were being together and spending their time with family. I remember Uncle Ramesh 
you know, as he said in the eulogy, his, the criticism went was primary school. But he didn't let that stop him to being a success. He was ambitious and he wanted success and the best for his family, which never made him try and continuously work to being and getting where he is today, or where he was. And if he had to do it all over again, I don't think that he would have wanted it any different, any differently, because of the love, the bond that he has with his family. I would remember anytime stopping here. You can guarantee that when you stop here, within the first five minutes, the first thing you will hear is, drink something single, you will live on in memory and in your hearts. Take solace in that. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for those wonderful uh, sentiments and those wonderful speeches. At this point in time, I just want to leave you quickly with a few things. I know I've said many things already, and you all heard it from the family. So we've spoken about um, that not being the end. We've spoken about the philosophy that comes from the scriptures and all of these things. One thing I always like to remind people wherever I go, be it in this situation or any other situation, is that here today you have a life, a life example, a life lesson to, to learn from. You know, Uncle would have lived this life, he would have completed his life in many different ways. You know, wonderful children, grandchildren and all of these things. You need to reflect on your life right now, wherever you are, whatever your age is. I want you to do some reflection. Maybe not now when you go home. And I want you to ask yourself one thing. Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Are you growing or you are dying? If you're learning, you are. You're learning and applying as a matter of fact, you are growing. If not, then you are just dying. You do not want to live your life every single day just existing and just dying. Who wants to live like that? You want to grow because only then can you really reap the fruits of life. Only then can you really enjoy a good quality of life because here's what the word is. We all have our own experience in different ways even when it comes to this and we may say this and that and the next and that's fine. Everybody has their own beliefs, right? But let me put this into perspective for you, right? I think about a lot of things, especially when in meditation, things come to you sometimes. We say that this is life and then there's the afterlife. Let me ask you a question. So you got another question, right? Question number two. What if this is the afterlife? But I need to think for a second. The possibilities I've seen through the different types of meditations and different things that I've done, the, the things that exist that you may not see with the physical eye, there's so much possibilities, infinite possibilities that exist out here. So anytime somebody says that this is what it is and there's nothing else, that's not true. There's so much more that exists out here. What I'm trying to say is I just want you to think a little bit more. So here's what. You say, well, um, let me prepare for death. I want to make the best use of it. Right? Finally, when you buy something like an appliance, right? Normally you get something called a manual. Not so? That thing is taken through independence, you don't know. Right? That we don't read at all. And then when things go wrong, when it doesn't work, then you wonder, well, why is this thing not working? I don't know. That's why they give you a manual. Read it, keep it, right? Similarly, we apply that same philosophy in our lives. You get a manual in the form of the scriptures. But you know what you do with it? You put it on the, and some shell somewhere in a corner. When the spiritual leader comes to your house, where's the scripture? You bring it quickly and dust it out and you blow it because the pump it. Thus, you have a manual for life. Do not apply the same philosophy that you apply when it comes to the appliances. Live differently, right? Take, take it and read one line. Connect. You have a godfather, you have a guru. Don't wait when things are bad and then, Baba, I'm check my patrana, things going bad. I'm telling you, I'm very, very specific about all of this, right? You want to not wait until it is too late, right? You see, God, you universe acknowledging what I'm saying. You don't want to wait until it is too late and then that is the time when I, I will check and see if something is wrong. The mental is day when other people will be seated, when other people will be chanting. Take the time that you have now and chant. Take the time that you have now and live good. Take the time that you have now and be kind and offer love to others. Right? The philosophy I live by and I leave you this, that's it. So, as I leave you with my words at this, love all, serve all, help all, hurt never. That's my motto for 2023 and it's what I've been trying to execute. I want you all to remember that. Love all, serve all, 
help of her. Hurt never. You do have to like the goodies. You will have a most beautiful life. And when this time comes that you leave your physical body, people will have good things to say about you as well. It's not about what they say, but it's about where you're going to go. What are you going to experience afterwards? Right? What you do now, when you die, you will also have a similar experience. Yeah? Blue is showing up and we had a lot of key. So at this point in time, as a question by the family, if there's anybody um, very quickly that would like to say a few words um, on behalf of the family or to the family, now is your time to do so. You're more than welcome to grace us with your presence. Is there anyone? So what I'll do is um, Good morning, everyone. I am the number one seven two two five acting corporal Monty from Mr. Barra, please. Um, Jagasa is my colleague, my bean boy. I love him. When I saw on the chat that his dad passed away, it brought tears to my eye because I lost my dad almost six years now. On behalf of the executive of the Southwestern Division, please accept our condolences. That it's something we can never get accustomed to, but at the end of the day, he's in a great place. The angels have opened the gateway to heaven, and he is there in peace. No more harm, no more fear, or anything like that. Words can never fulfill any kind of comfort, but he's in a good place. Continue being strong, and so I see you have a beautiful family here, everybody coming together with you today. So, mommy, condolences to you. God bless you. Mama, you are doing an amazing job. Thank you everyone for being here, being supportive of the family and again, good morning. May God bless you all. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for your kindness. Blessing to you as well. So if there's no one else at this point in time, we'll offer our first spin now. Then we'll go on to our closing and afterwards I'll give an opportunity uh, before we proceed to the Moscow Creek, of course. You all can come in an orderly fashion. You can view if you want to place the flowers, whatever the case may be, you can do so. And a couple of minutes after, we will make preparations to leave for the Moscow Creek. I'll tell you, we'll pass the trailer out of the main road and then through the search trees, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Om Madhyam Bhagavatar Samukha Pretasya Preta Trivar Nartam Eshate Pindu Mayadi Titavo Patishtitam Preta Nantada Etam Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Yeah. 
this bond for us and eternal peace until we meet again. You will always have a special place in our hearts. We love you. Thank you. So at this point in time, once more, devotees, friends, I ask you all to seat yourselves in an upright position. I want you to clasp your hands, close your eyes. We pray together with faith, love, and devotion. You pray in whatever way, again, you feel, as you feel comfortable, how you know to pray. As we send our love, light, and energy to this departed one, wherever he is at this point in time, we ask for a safe, peaceful journey into the hereafter. We pray and we ask for blessing for ourselves as well, Bhagavan. God, guide each and every one of us onto the righteous path, onto the right path. So that when our time comes, we will also transition into a better place as we pray with faith, love, and devotion. Om Anadini Dhano Deva Shankar Chakra Gladha Akshay Pundri Kaksha Preta Moksha Prado Bhava Om Tvameva Mata Chapita Tvameva Tvameva Bandhusha Saka Tvameva Tvameva Vidya Dravinam Tvameva Tvameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Tvameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Together Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Arihi Om Bolo Shri Vrindava Gari Avaki Alright, thank you so much for being wonderful attentive audience. I pray for God's blessings upon each and every one of you. As I stated before this point in time, we'll give an opportunity for the immediate family to come and pay their last respects.
coming now. Daddy, when you're coming, boy. Hey, God. Let us come. When your mother ready. Oh, God, Daddy. <laughs>
Hello, one main front to get Yeah, 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 yeah. You can take it from the one and from the other. Come on, 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 come